Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Blender Developer Sneak Peek. My name is Thomas Beck and today we are going to look at so amazing features like the Robert Panning easing equations, the corner pin node, the sample or lights option, the multiple image interpolation modes, the dynamic topology detailed in object and in relative space and the HSL color picker. So it's much to cover. Let's start. The first thing I'm going to show you is something that you already are familiar with if you are following my Blender Developer um, Rocket Science series. It's the uh, Robert Panner easing equations for um, the F curves. And that feature really lasted very long. It was four years in our patch tracker until we uh, implemented it. And now it's in and it's really awesome. So let's see what it does. The first thing is I got four, I got uh, three cubes here that all have animation data on it and are doing like this. So nothing spe spectacular. But if you are selecting now this cube and change the interpolation mode, then normally we only had constant linear and busier here. But now we got many more. And I'll show you one effect and all other effects and all other things you can do with it. You can see in the, um, um, in the tutorial I told you at the start. So let's see the bounce effect here. Select bounce and let it animate. And immediately you see what it does. It is doing a bounce without having to set manually any keyframes. So that is really cool and very easy. And you could even define that it's easing in and out. So it's bouncing at the start and bouncing at the end. And this uh, option is there for every um, interpolation mode that you are choosing here, like for example, elastic. And this is really helpful for motion traffics mainly, but I think that you will find many different areas where this could be useful. So let's set this one to elastic, this, this one to bounce, and this one to sinusoidal. So you're seeing what it does. And let's play it back. And you see with only three different options, you got three completely different motions. So for all other effects, just look at the video where I'm doing a complete project with that. And now let's continue with the corner pin modes. For the corner pin node, I prepared this file. First, you got a title there, the Caminandas title. That's simply an image. Then it's fed into the corner pin that you can find under distort then corner pin. And then it's connected to a viewer or a composite node. So pretty basic and pretty easy. What is the corner pin now doing? Essentially, it is mapping this, uh, this image to a plane that is defined by four points. One point there and there and here and there. And with the corner pin, you're now able to move those points and this image is getting warped accordingly. So if you are changing this value here, the X value and the Y value, the Z value is not important in this, in this uh, case, then you can warp this image like so. And this is really something that is very useful if you are um, text, texturing via the compositor um, for example, signs that are not uh, not aligned to the view or something like this. And that is really helpful and can be animated too, I think, yeah, by hitting e, uh, I. So it's something that is uh, really easy and really uh, responsive if you'd like to see this uh, directly in the compositor. So that was the corner pin. And the next thing I'd like to show you is the um, sample or lights option. 
To show you what the sample or lights option is all about, I downloaded and altered a scene from Thomas Dinges that he committed while he was um, developing and committing this change to Blender. And he created a scene with many mesh lights, as you see here, uh, many, many lights, as you see here. And those lights are very problematic for the um, renderer normally, because you have to uh, sample each ray that is coming from the camera is hitting some object, then it's bouncing back and hitting some light eventually. And when it's when it hits the, this light, then it is sampled accordingly. Otherwise, it's considered as shadowish, and so no sampling, no light sampling at all is done. But when you got these um, this, these two options, then you could say, okay, I want you to um, to consider all lamps in the scene and to um, sample them equally, so it's much less noisy but it could be a little bit slower and how much less noisier it is and how faster it is because you need less samples when you turn those options on um, i show you in this example one one scene has those two options off but many samples and one scene has those two options on and less sample. So I'll pause this recording now and render those two out and then I'll show you the differences. So stay tuned. It finished and we are now in the off scene, in the scene where I turn up the diffuse and glossy samples and the mesh light samples and um, uncheck those two options. And you can see that there is fairly a bit of noise there still and there and when we switch now to the or let's look at the time that is 44 seconds and when we switch now to the sample on then you'll see that we got 27 um 27 seconds for this scene and it's much much better so let me just compare it again this one was 44 seconds and this one is only 24, 27 seconds and it's much better. So that is really a helpful addition when you got many lights, try this option definitely out. That should improve your render a lot and your render time. And for the next option, we are staying in the cycles, um, in the cycles area and we are loading up a new scene, the, uh, the oh no the texture interpolation scene that is a fairly easy scene too it's just a plane watched from a ca camera above with a fairly easy shader one emission shader that uh, got a twitter uh, some some twitter image applied to it and when i activate the um, the cycles rendering then you see, okay, that is the image. It would be crisp if it's that far away. But when we are zooming in, then it's more and more anti-aliased, anti but it's uh, not that crisp anymore. But what is when you don't like this anti-aliasing? And if you don't want it, then there is a new option that now. This new option is closest and then it's just taking the pixels that are closest to those positions in the um, in the space in the space in the texture space, and all those other options like cubic and smart are only uh, available available for the OSL shaders. So that's nothing that we should care about for the cycles uh, engine, but for the OSL backend. And this is really a welcome addition if you got some uh, graphics that you like to do for Minecraft or something like that, then you would like to have this pixelated look. And that is something that you can uh, create now with the closest image filtering. So that was it for this option.
Let's now look at the next feature, the in the uh, dynamic relative and constant detail. And for this feature, I prepared a very simple scene with just a sphere, a matcap material on it. And now I am enabling dynamic topology mode like this. And for all of you that are not familiar with it, here you can in, uh, insert the detail size, so the maximum length of the edges that are created. And if you're choosing to have that at 10 pixels and you're drawing, then you see that the maximum, um, maximum edge length is only 10 pixels. But when you are zooming in, then this detail is preserved. So no matter how far you are zooming in, it's always 10 pixels from that view. And that may or may be not that what you want, because normally, when we are um, sculpting, then we like to have this uh, level of detail overall, over the complete mesh. And this new mode here that Anthony introduced uh, recently, the constant detail, is exactly for that. Then you have a new slider here, the detail size, that is uh, measured in Blender units, so 30% of one Blender unit. And when you are decreasing it now to, let's say, 8%, then you would have this amount of detail here. And when you are zooming in, and zooming in means that I need to, um, to increase the radius a bit, then you'll see it's exactly the same amount of detail. So it preserves the, uh, the, de the percentage of the detail. So that is really a very cool feature. And apart from that, Anthony uh, introduced another feature yesterday that is this eye picker uh, symbol here. And when you click on that and you're choosing a part of your mesh, like this part here, then this, um, this detail that is lying underneath this uh, click point is getting uh, inserted into the detail size here. And so you could switch very fast between a uh, high detailed high detail size like this one and a lower detail size like this one so that is very easy and very uh, very helpful Anthony so thanks for that and now let's come to the next feature to show you the next feature I didn't have to create any special scene just the scene with a colored material here and uh, I opened up the user preferences inside Blender here, but you could also open it up via user preferences, this menu entry here. And um, when you're looking at this thing here, then you could easily define our color picker type. So the thing that is popping up when you are clicking on this entry. But we always had the HSV, the SVH, HSV here and HVS here, but we never had the HSL circle. So let's select that and you'll see that we can now define via the lightness of the color, which color we want. So just pick any color and define the lightness. That is a really cool model color model that we are using in our studio also very often in other graphic applications. So it's very cool that is Blender now, that Blender is now capable of this. So that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed this um, Blender developer sneak peek again. Uh, just comment, share and add us on Google+, on Facebook, on Vimeo or on Twitter. We're very happy to have you there and see you there and see you interacting so much. So stay tuned, keep on planning and we'll see us next time. Bye.